in Sleepy Hollow, federal taxpayers, member of CPARC supporter of Daryl Davis's efforts to make the housing, public housing in, in Pisco healthy and available. And I pointed out two weeks ago that I've just noticed a difference in the way that people are treated. And I'm making the same observation tonight. I noticed when Mr. Edler was out here, was up here, that certain people were listening. Ms. Talbot, it looked like you were texting. Mr. Torres, it looked like you were calculating something. Um, I something was in your lap, and that's where your eyes were. Um, and Mayor Foster, it looked like you were looking at a calendar or an appointment book. So, just curious, just making observations. This is what I perceive. And then I saw that um, Daryl got up to speak, and again, he was held to his five minutes, and then someone got up to talk about a puppy, and she talked for nine minutes and 41 seconds. I timed her. <laughs> that is often what happens when Mr. Daryl speaks, Mr. D Mr. Davis speaks. She, sp she was up here for 9 minutes and 41 seconds, pointing out a discrepancy. You know, you make the rules, but you change them. So I Actually, just... Actually, I appreciate your observations. I, though, will caution you that our city clerk does her best to manage everybody's time equitably. We up here don't have a time clock. We rely on our city clerk, and she does a good job in doing that. And I do take umbrage with you criticizing the city clerk. She's not criticizing. Yes, she is criticizing the clerk. Well, then I would like to point out and the that one person about was time. up here for nine minutes and 41 seconds. And, um, see, and we when take Mr. Your Davis speaks, I'm finishing my, my thought, when Mr. Davis speaks, whether people talk over him or not, he is always reminded when five minutes are up. It's been my observation. Right, last week and this week, thank you. Last two weeks ago and tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe how pathetic that woman is. And how dare you reduce my life. A very complicated 20 year long story that you try to condense into five minutes. And you have this skinny witch this one-eyed skinny witch lying, first of all, because I just timed it. It was, I think if I'm reading this right, barely over six minutes. And that would be because the racist peanut gallery starts ranting and raving, waving their arms, distracting, throwing people off their focus. And I swear... If Esther Brown got up there and made some mind is terrible thing to waste sarcastic joke about me, you people are so ridiculous. So ridiculous. And Daryl frickin' Davis has the nerve as I'm walking out and I make the mistake of stopping to just say, You're a bunch of hypocrites. They're cruel, they're mean. I barely got two words out of my mouth. He's like, get out of here, just go. And I'm like, well, I'm certainly not going to go because you tell me to go. And then he yells and screams. She's harassing us. Again, sarcastically making a joke about what my entire uh, attempt at communicating was. The spiteful, petty bullshit that people pull on each other to write false police reports, waste taxpayer dollars, get each other in trouble because they're like the mentality of three-year-old, I don't want to say it, IQ of fives. And um, it's just ridiculous. Such a joke. This guy has the nerve to twice insult me, they constantly make reference, never hearing a word that I say, 
too caught up in their own little frickin' um, impersonation of an activist. It's such a joke. You compare somebody like this woman or Daryl Davis to to someone who I've just recently discovered a couple days ago, Tim to Christopher, and and actually doing something without this old stale like looking for an argument crap. Oh my God! And no, ta- mind is a terrible thing to waste. Nobody has a freaking clue what you people are talking about. Nobody even knows who Mr. Phipps is, if that's even his name. You know, so, oh, oh, because.